Technical indicators are crucial for some traders, but others prefer not to use these tools to identify trends in the markets. Uh, we have here with us Alex Ong, co-founder of uh, Traders Corners Online. Hello, Alex. Hi, very, very you? welcome. Okay, what are the advantages of using technical indicators to predict financial uh, assets' next movement when you're looking at the charts? I don't know that technical indicators have an advantage over something like price action, but where I think technical indicators really come into their own is that they give confirmation to what you already see on the chart. So rather than being driven by what the technical indicators are telling you, the way that we use them is more of a confirmation to the price action that we use on the that we see on the chart. So we kind of combine the two together. We're not, you know, exclusively with one or the other. If if we see that we've got a double top, for example, on a chart and the MACD is giving us some sort of divergence, then that will just confirm what we're looking at at that particular point in time. So I'm not sure that it's it gives any one person an advantage if you look at it in isolation, but it helps give the trader confidence when mm -hmm. they're taking the trade. Okay, but you've said that you look at, at the price action, at the charts. Yes. So the combination of the two is what makes your trading so consistent or are there other factors? Yeah, I mean, that, that makes it consistent. What we do a lot is we build a portfolio of trades, okay? So we're not just looking at one currency or one instrument at a time, we, we try to build a portfolio. So even if, let's say for example, one position is losing us money, then another may be making us money. The way that we use our indicators is really just to kind of back up our analysis. When we first started, we tried trading with just you know, a plain price chart and that was okay. Um, we tried tra trading just based on fundamentals and that's okay too. But actually we found that when you bring everything together, and you accept that actually every different aspect of trading does have its place in your, in your arsenal, if you like, um, you get more consistent results. And that may, that may be a psychological thing, that may be something that's just up here, but it translates into better profits for us. So. Yeah, but uh, psychology is fundamental also in, yes. when you're trading, so it, it, it's a, a trend, uh, a technique that makes you more confident. Yes. Maybe it's what, it's what it, it, it means, right? Yeah, exactly. So when you've you may be taking a string of losses in a row, then you know if you've just got to go on what you feel, then what you feel is never going to be good, right? But if you can look at the charts and you have certain technical indicators that are tried and tested, and that you trust, um, if you can, if they're lining up with what you see on the charts, then you have the confidence to take the next trade and to take the next trade, and then eventually you come out ahead of the game. But is this the way that you control your fear and your emotions or stop losses are some kind of life best when you trade? Yeah, I mean, stop. you can't trade without a stop loss. It's, it's financial suicide. Most, most yeah. traders forget about it. Yeah, I, I don't, well, they may forget about it. They may choose to forget about it. Oh, um, yeah. People have different approaches to stop losses. So, for example, when I'm day trading, um, I won't necessarily have a set stop loss for any one position we'll have like a, a daily stop loss. So it may be, you know, that we're willing to lose 3% of our account. Now that may be the combination of a number of different trades. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the stop loss is definitely, as you say, a sort of a, a life vest. It's something that traders definitely, definitely should use, but I don't think it's the be all and end all. You know, having confidence comes from experience as well. Um, so. You can't just turn up to the market set and hope to be able to make money. You need to build confidence through experience and use whatever it is that you believe in. Because fundamentally, if, if you don't believe in using indicators, then they won't work for you. Regardless of whether they work for me or they work for my brother or whoever else. It needs to, you need to trade the way that you can really get behind in the way that you understand. So, under your point of view, emotions and, and how confident you feel when you trade is as important as the technique and as the charts and, and as the fundamentals. Yeah, I mean, maybe more so because even if you have the greatest system in the world, if you don't have the confidence to trade it, you're not going to be successful. So psychology is a massive, massive part of anybody's trading, trading strategy. And other aspect that most traders also look at its volatility and now it's spiking again in the FX market. Yeah. How do you see the current environment? Is it more interesting? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, because the volatility has contracted so much over the past 18 months, two years, 
I mean, actually the other week my brother and I were looking at the average true range of something like the euro. Mm -hmm. And it's gone from being above 100 to sort of being, you know, 40, 50 pips a day, which is nothing. It's not, there's not enough there to make money. So we have been looking at other instruments. We trade the DAX a lot, um, trade the, the NASDAQ, um, the S&P. But yeah, I mean, the, hopefully the markets will start to move again in the coming months. And if they do, then we'll be there to take advantage of the opportunities. And uh, which currency pairs would you be looking at in, from <coughs> now till the end of the year, let's say? Well, primarily, we, we feel that the U.S. dollar is going to strengthen um, from now for the foreseeable future. And part of the reason for that is that uh, over the, the past number of years, obviously, the, the interest rates in the U.S. have been extremely low, but the, the Fed have been tapering over the mm -hmm. past months. Um, and, that, and whereas the U.S. dollar has been the funding, funding currency of choice, Um, over the past years, we feel that that dynamic is going to change. Um, so looking into the future, we see the dollar getting stronger. Um, so a stronger dollar, you bet for a stronger dollar than, yeah. than how it is, it is now? Yes, currently. Um, and we also see that the pound um, has a little bit to lose as well. I know that we had the referendum last week and we had the mm -hmm. no vote, which is fine. But there's still some uncertainty in the market. You know, we still don't know what that really means for, for Scotland and for the rest of the economy. So we can see some further weakness in the pound as well. So more weakness in the pound, strong in the dollar. And what about the euro, the, the euro against the dollar? Is what? it going to fall to the market floor at 1.750? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the euro is, is, is very, very weak. And... It's kind of the reverse of what's been going on with the dollar. So whereas we said that we, we, the dollar was the funding currency of choice, mm -hmm. we believe that the euro is actually going to, to take that title going forward. Mm -hmm. So we can, see, we can only see further weakness for the euro for the foreseeable future. So is it going to break this 1.7750? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And I mean, then it's there today. How, right? how, how uh, deep would it fell till <laughs> 1.22 it's the next... There's huge resistance. Uh, it is a big support level. Um, to be honest, I don't like to try and catch a falling knife. So <laughs> trying to pick tops and bottoms isn't where we make our money. So I, I don't have a clue where it can go to. I mean, it, it will go to where the markets believe is fair value, whether that be mm. 122, 117, you know, parity. You never know. I don't think so, knows, but you but never know. It's, it's a long run. I mean, yeah. it would be like in six Six to twelve months, not in the next three months. No, no, no. The currency bet is going maybe to to reach those levels. I don't see that it will go that far in the next two to three months. But you know, from a longer term perspective, what I can say from our portfolio perspective is we're only looking to short the euro dollar at the moment. We have no plans of buying that currently from a longer term perspective. Okay, so strong dollar, it's really, really strong, stronger than it is now. Yes. A weak pound and even a weaker euro. That's yes. the, those are the predictions by Alex Ong. Thank you very much for being with Thank us. Thank you very much for having me.